So when it comes to the types of exam questions you might get, uh, they'll probably focus on one of these three areas, okay? A discussion of the factors that can lead and do lead to the underachievement of ethnic minority groups, so as I mentioned before, home factors, labelling, subcultures, etc. Secondly, a discussion on how not all EMGs or ethnic minority groups underachieve, and your best example here will be Chinese students. And there is an article for you guys to read in class tomorrow on Chinese students. I will email that article to any students missing. And finally, the main differences in underachievement are based around social class difference and not because of ethnic differences. Okay. So when considering home background, um, have a think. What are the differences in the level of encouragement, sorry, encouragement given by parents of different ethnic groups? Are parents more encouraging within one ethnic group than another and consider why parents might consider sorry why parents might encourage one gender over another to do well in education particularly groups like maybe the Bangladeshi community uh, possibly the gypsy community um, think about how they view the role of women within that community will they be the breadwinners or are they seen in a different context it's also worth, con worth considering how family structure might affect achievement. So what types of families might have a positive impact on achievement? What family types will be able to give uh, good economic resources? What family types are more likely to be able to help with homework? And are there family types out there that might actually uh, mean that students are working in cramped conditions without having any space to work? This also links to the material factors that can affect how well a student does, particularly poverty. What I'd like you to do is have a look at what Flaherty said about the impact of poverty on the achievement of certain ethnic minority groups and a lack of access to certain facilities. How does that affect achievement? So what facilities are important to access? Uh, finally, it's worth considering uh, the impact of cultural capital and, or deprivation. Okay, so this is more to do with the values of um, certain ethnic minorities. Do they lack the cultural capital to uh, value education? Do they lack the cultural capital to understand the education system? You should know plenty about that. You can talk about Gerwitz's study. Um, how well do you think ethnic minority parents might do with selection? Okay, so when you think about the parental choice model, uh, will they come up against any block uh, blockades, I suppose, to getting their children into the good schools? And why might the parental choice system uh, brought about through marketisation make it difficult for them to get their kids into good schools? Throughout this, you can evaluate all of your arguments with the point in the yellow circle. Are all ethnic minorities at a disadvantage? Okay, that's worth considering. Do all uh, ethnic minorities fail at school because of home factors? Or do some of them do exceptionally well? Um, it's also worth considering what impact gender has. So you can refer to the graph on the previous slide or have a look at figure 3.4 on page 113. The impact of low attendance is quite significant. This is considered a home factor because it's um, a home uh, it's reasons at home that will decide whether you determine whether you do or don't go to school. It is a statistical fact that pupils from black other heritage, both boys and girls, had an average uh, unauthorized absence that was significantly higher than all other ethnic groups. Okay. 12.54 half, half days throughout the year. What impact do you think unauthorised absences might have on a student's education? Okay. And why do you think students from black other heritage are much more likely to have a lower um, attendance rate than other ethnic groups? So two questions for you to consider. The impact of unauthorised absences and why black other are more likely to have unauthorised absences than many other groups. 
It was also found that um, pupils from Bangladesh, Bangladeshi backgrounds had a higher level of unauthorised absences when compared to young people from black African and Indian backgrounds. So the second group to be concerned about is possibly the Bangladeshi group. Okay? They actually have lower attendance than those from the black African community and the Indian backgrounds. So again, why do you think Bangladeshi students might not, might not attend... Sorry. Oh, sorry. Why do you think they are more likely to have unauthorized absences, so the parents not give a reason for their absence, and what impact do you think that might have? The other side of the argument is things that go on in schools. Okay, teachers' attitudes and labelling, particularly. Gilbin and Yodel said that teachers had racialized expectations. They expected black students to present more discipline problems, and therefore were more likely to challenge their behaviour in a negative light. So what process does that trigger if teachers engage with students in a negative way? Have a think. Cecile Wright said that there is unintentional racism in schools by the way that teachers treat ethnic minority pupils. She did say that teachers do not do it on purpose, but they do not realise that in some cases they are excluding um, certain ethnic groups from discussions, particularly around a shared culture that they may not have with the white uh, British majority in the class. Now, Tony Sewell is the key study that you guys must remember. Um, we've already looked at his research before, so please use the article that you already have uh, when thinking about Tony Sewell's research. He found that most teachers in his study had a negative attitude towards African Caribbean boys. Many students actually, many students, sorry, many teachers um, felt uh, that they were in a difficult position to challenge and challenge negative behaviour by Afro-Caribbean boys and in, instead of challenging them in the classroom they would prefer to send them out which is go some way to explain the high exclusion rate of African-Caribbean boys. A bit more detail in Tony Sewell here. Um, he also talked about pupil subcultures. Okay, So again, I said there, look at the key study. You already have that printed off when we looked at gender and uh, achievement. So he studied, he, uh, sorry, he identified uh, anti-school attitudes among African Caribbean boys, and he argued that they are influenced by something called a ghetto culture that devalues educational success. Now, on the next slide or two, I've actually given you the lyrics of a song that I'd like you to have a look at. See if you can find any evidence uh, of ghetto culture in the song lyrics. Okay. He argued that, that such attitudes and language and dress are actually mimicked by white and Asian boys as well because it's become commercialised in popular culture. Okay? So while well this ghetto culture affecting Africa and Caribbean boys, it's also affecting other groups of boys as well. So again, Tony Sewell's study is very useful because you can use it for ethnicity and gender. What impact do you think it might have uh, on these students in school? If their attitudes change, they devalue education. Their language change, changes, so they speak in slang and therefore restricted code. And if they do not follow the uniform policy and change their dress, um, what might happen to them around the school if they're not dressed appropriately? He also found in some further research that Afro-Caribbean boys had internalised a badge of victimhood which led to the formation of subcultures. This essentially meant that many African-Caribbean boys believed that being black was something negative and something they had to deal with. It was something they had to overcome or accept as um, happening to them which was quite an interesting phenomena in the sense that they identified their own race as being something bad that had happened to them, therefore they were victims of their own race. You can always evaluate the labelling theory or um, are there any theory that subcultures um, leads to failure of ethnic minorities by using Mary Fuller's study of black girls where she showed that these black girls rejected the negative label of the teacher and actually um, succeeded educationally, not in order to prove the teacher wrong or to get the teacher's approval, but because they wanted to do well and they formed their own pro-school subculture. And 
there's the lyrics if you can look at them. Please um, identify and annotate on your PowerPoint examples from this song that reinforces the ghetto culture that devalues education. Can you spot um, any other routes to success that are identified in this song? Does this song encourage students to do something other than achieve in school in order to achieve success and status? There's also the curriculum to consider. Uh, many sociologists have done research into the ethnocentric curriculum. Okay, and we're going to be looking at some studies in tomorrow's lesson. There's an argument that the curriculum and resources used are only relevant to a certain ethnic group. Okay, the white British group. Therefore, they are ethnocentric. Please, can you give a definition of ethnocentric? Okay. And some of the examples you might want to consider are school assemblies. School assemblies tend to have um, messages around the shared British culture, maybe even religious messages around the Christian religion. School holiday times tend to be, well, are uh, built around the Christian calendar of Easter and Christmas and don't take into account many of the holidays of the huge ethnic minority populations in our country. So, for example, within the Muslim community, Ramadan is their um, main religious holiday, but they are not often given time off. Also, when we consider the languages taught in schools, they are predominantly European languages, for example, Spanish and French and German. There is an argument that this is a form of institutional racism, as uh, students are not encouraged to try languages from, for example, Poland um, or Hindi, um, or any languages where some of the majority of our migrant po immigrant population seems to come from. Finally, the Swan Report has supported this finding. They argue that teachers and resources uh, used certain negative images of ethnic minorities in the teaching. Can you think of one subject in particular that only portrays uh, a particular ethnic group in a negative light? And can you please write down an example of how they do this? Selection for schools. Um, this would be referring to the, the growth of marketisation in schools since the 1988 Education Reform Act. David Gilborn, uh, working by himself this time, he looked at the effect of marketisation on selection processes and actually said they act against minority ethnic pupils. And here are some questions I'd like you to answer. Why might ethnic minority pupils be less attractive to schools? Is this the same for all ethnic minorities? So remember, that's your AO2 throughout this topic. Not all ethnic minorities are unattractive, and why is that? And why do you think ethnic minority students that are from poorer backgrounds uh, may be attracted to some schools? And this is something to do with something called the pupil premium. So some schools actually want to have students from poor backgrounds and it's to do with the pupil premium. See if you can find out what the pupil premium is and why a school might want a high proportion of students on the pupil premium. Research by the Commission for Racial Equality supports this view and they actually suggest that most minority ethnic pupils are more likely to end up in unpopular schools. What else is going on when it comes to um, selection for schools, though? Is it just the schools not picking the students, or is it something to do with the parents and their selection of schools? Okay, so remember to try and develop a debate. Now, finally, is it just ethnicity? And what does the following graph suggest about the link between ethnicity and social class? <laughs> 